Good morning, and welcome to morning prayer for Wednesday, March 24th. I'm Mother Tracy Duggar. It's my privilege to welcome you to morning prayer on behalf of Episcopal Church of the Nativity here in Port St. Lucie, Florida. As we pray today, I invite you to pray along using the words you'll find on the screen. Today we commemorate Oscar Romero. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, because we have rebelled against him and not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God by following his laws which he set before us. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit to keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Our Psalm for this morning is Psalm 119, selected verses 145 through 176. I call with my whole heart, answer me, O Lord, that I may keep your statutes. I call to you, O oh, that you would save me. I will keep your decrees. Early in the morning I cry out to you, for in your word is my trust. My eyes are open in the night watches, that I may meditate upon your promise. Hear my voice, O Lord, according to your loving kindness, according to your judgments, give me life. They draw near who in malice persecute me. They are very far from your law. You, O Lord, are near at hand, and all your commandments are true. Long have I known from your decrees that you have established them forever. Behold my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. According to your promise, give me life. Deliverance is far from the wicked, for they do not study your statutes. Great is your compassion, O Lord. Preserve my life according to your judgments. There are many who persecute and oppress me, yet I have not swerved from your decrees. I look with loathing at the faithless, for they have not kept your word. See how I love your commandments, O Lord, and your mercy preserve me. The heart of your word is truth. All your righteous judgments endure forevermore. Rulers have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. I am as glad because of your promise as one who finds great spoils. As for lies, I hate and abhor them, but your law is my love. Seven times a day do I praise you because of your righteous judgments. Great peace have they who love your law. For them there is no stumbling block. I have hoped for your salvation, O Lord. 
and have fulfilled your commandments. I have kept your decrees and I have loved them deeply. I have kept your commandments and decrees for all my ways are before you. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. My lips shall pour forth your praise when you teach me your statutes. My tongue shall sing of your promise, for all your commandments are righteous. Let your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your commandments. I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let me live, and I will praise you, and let your judgments help me. I have gone astray like a sheep that is lost. Search for your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson comes from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 25, verses 30 through 38. You therefore shall prophesy against them all these words and say to them, The Lord will roar from on high, and from his holy habitation utter his voice. He will roar mightily against his fold and shout like those who tread grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. The clamor will resound to the ends of the earth, for the Lord has an indictment against the nations. He is entering into judgment with all flesh, and the guilty he will put to the sword, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, see, disaster is spreading from nation to nation, and a great tempest is stirring from the farthest parts of the earth. Those slain by the Lord on that day shall extend from one end to the earth to the other. They shall not be lamented or gathered or buried. They shall become dung on the surface of the ground. Wail, you shepherds, and cry out. Roll in ashes, you lords of the flock. For the days of your slaughter have come and your dispersions, and you shall fall like a choice vessel. But flight shall fail the shepherds, and there shall be no escape for the lords of the flock. Hark the cry of the shepherds and the wail of the lords of the flock, for the Lord is despoiling their pasture, and the peaceful folds are devastated because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Like a lion, he has left his covert, for the land has become a waste because of the cruel sword and because of his fierce anger. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle in response is a song of penitence. O Lord and ruler of the house of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O oh Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand and you do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O oh Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal Sure of your gracious goodness, I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your kindness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to the ages of ages. Amen. We're going to skip a reading and a response for today as my time is slightly limited. 
And we'll go on to the gospel reading of John chapter 10, verse 1 through 18. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I bring, must bring them also and they will listen to my vi voice so there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it up from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we commemorate Oscar Alnofo Romero y Galdamez, Galdamez, commonly known as Monsignor Romero, who was a priest in the Roman Catholic Church in El Salvador and later became a Archbishop of San Salvador. Now as the Archbishop, he wish it, witnessed the numerous human rights that were going on in this region and he began to become politically active. And he was denounced by the Roman Catholic Church for his activism. He was even assaulted by gunshot while consecrating the mass. And I wanna present him not as a paragon of what we should be doing, but as a saint to be upheld and to say, there are times when the church is called to stand, and yet we do not, because sitting with the culture as it is, is good for us. Therefore, God equips and calls various individuals to stand in opposition. And I believe God does that with Mr. Oscar Romero, bishop but he also does that with individuals throughout history and in the church and i want to encourage all of you as people who are part of this nativity family to realize that jesus made no peace with false leaders either jesus says anybody who comes by another way is not the shepherd and indeed, the thief comes to lie. Sometimes our destruction comes about not through obvious means, but through winsome lies told over time. And um, also this prophet Jeremiah we read this morning is speaking about the condemnation that is going to come for false leaders leaders who willingly led others who dish, di, could not have known better astray for their own power and gain and reasons. It is not an easy thing to tell truth to power. 
but Jesus did it. And so are we called to do so. I believe we in this country stand at a precipice. Will we name truth when we see it? We are in an age of wonderful digital media, which keeps us united in crazy COVID times. But it also divides us through misinformation and disinformation and propaganda campaigns and the inability to tell what sources are truthful. And I would just caution you all as you continue to live life in the world to have ears that hear and eyes that are open to the truth of our brothers and sisters in this land that are suffering and those throughout the world suffering under political oppression and human rights and also the mechanism of capitalistic slavery that sends children down into mines to get precious metals in Africa that power our cell phones that we don't quite know how to live without. Do not blind yourselves to the very high cost of so many things and ask God to show you how you can speak truth and not lead others astray. Almighty God, you called your servant Oscar Romero to be a voice for the voiceless poor and to give his life as a seed of freedom and a sign of hope. Grant that we, inspired by his sacrifice and the example of the martyrs of El Salvador, may without fear or favor witness to your word who abides, your word who is life, even Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praised and glory now and forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, <clears throat> and, the life of, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. And you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God and Father of all whom the whole heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship you, all nations obey you, all tongues confess and bless you, and men and women everywhere love you and serve you in peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the world cycle of prayer, we pray for the people of Gabon, 
And we pray for our sisters and brothers, members of the Fellowship of Independent Evangelical Churches. And we pray for peace. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, so mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory now and forever. Amen. Let us pray now for our own needs and for those of others. Lord, thank you for the ability to be together while apart. Thank you for the ways that that blesses us in this ongoing crisis of COVID. And we pray for all of those in the medical industry, for those conducting vaccinations, for those still conducting research, Lord. We just pray that you would guide our hands and our voices to be united in a common bond for the public good. We pray for those who are sick, Lord, that you would heal them from their infirmities, that you would grant them peace in their miseries, and that you would give them day by day the strength needed to face their trial. And we pray for all those who are grieving, Lord, that you would comfort them, that your Holy Spirit would wrap around them like a blanket, and they would know your love and peace. We pray for all those who have died, that they might find their rest in your eternal kingdom, where there is no grief nor sorrow. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech you that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of your favor and glad to do your will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion us into one united people. Endue with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in your name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to your law we may show forth your praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in you to fail all which we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to your merciful care, that being guided by your providence, we may dwell secure in your peace. Grant to the president of the United States and our vice president, to the governor of this state and to all in authority, wisdom and strength to know and to do your will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness, and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in your fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Saying together the general thanksgiving, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, we honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. May God be with you until we meet again. Just a friendly reminder, our Holy Week is coming up. And so we have next Wednesday, in addition to morning prayer at 10 a.m., which will go live to Facebook and YouTube, we will have 5.30 p.m. Stations of the Cross, only in person, outdoors in the garden. If you'd like to walk the stations independently, you'll find a video inviting you to do so on our YouTube page. 
We will also have our Monday, Thursday, 7 p.m. That's going to go live to both Facebook and YouTube. So you can just check in at 7 p.m. on the top of the YouTube um, Nativity PSL page will be the live when we are live. When it's not live, you won't see that live now button. Um, and then on Good Friday at noon and 7 p.m., likewise, we will go live to Facebook and YouTube, inviting people to join us. And on Easter, we will have our 7.30, our 9 a.m., and we will resume our 10 a.m., 10, not 10 a.m., 10.30 a.m. service. And those, again, are all going to be live streamed only, both to Facebook and YouTube and in person. So we're no longer going to be doing pre-recording as we move forward in an effort to help me as your priest spend more time in the present with all of you. And I continue to pray for all of you that if you have the chance, please do get vaccinated. Our governor has lowered the age requirement to age 50. And there is a vaccine event coming up in Fort Pierce that's going to run for several weeks. So I encourage you to go to the Florida Department of Health website and check that out. And God be with you until we meet again.